Hi there, I'm Susie Cohen, America's pharmacist, and usually I'm talking about prescription drugs, but today I'm talking about something that was brought to Western medicine in 1839 by a physician who was Irish named Dr. William O'Shaughnessy. Cannabis, otherwise known as marijuana. Most people think of it for recreational use, but it has medicinal benefits, just like other herbs. Since the time O'Shaughnessy brought it to the Western world, it's been our go-to medicine, should I call it medicine, for 200 years. Having worked in retail pharmacies, I can assure you that they do not carry cannabis. You will not be able to get it from like a CVS or a Walgreens or any store like that. You will have to go to a licensed dispensary in your state if your state permits it. And that's where they carry it. It used to be illegal in the United States, but lately more and more states are decriminalizing it. Now, that doesn't mean that you can just walk into a store and buy it. That means that if it's decriminalized, you can get it with a prescription. And to get a prescription, you have to see a doctor that specializes in cannabis and you have to have a legitimate complaint. When used medicinally, cannabis can be a treatment option for a wide range of conditions and symptoms. Having worked in retail pharmacies, I can assure you that they do not carry cannabis. You will not be able to get it from like a CVS or a Walgreens or any store like that. You will have to go to a licensed dispensary in your state if your state permits it. And that's where they carry it. They're basically like pharmacies for pot. And now here are the five potential medical uses for cannabis. Number one, pain relief. Cannabis has long been known to reduce pain and inflammation. It can dampen down the cytokine pathway and bring instant relief to many aches and pains. That's why it's sometimes even applied topically to wounds, but usually most people take it via inhalation or take it orally through gummies or pills. A 2018 review of studies published in a prestigious journal called JAMA, as you know, the Journal of the American Medical Association, found that cannabis use was associated with statistically significant reductions in chronic pain. I don't want to make it sound like a one-size-fits-all pain pill, because it's not. There are risks associated with cannabis use, including the potential for addiction, impaired driving, and other negative health effects. Number two, anxiety and depression relief. Cannabis may hold potential as a treatment for both anxiety, panic attacks, tearfulness, melancholy, and full-on depression. We know this because a 2019 study published in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry found that cannabis use was in fact associated with very significant reductions in symptoms of anxiety and depression. That said, there is this weird paradoxical effect where cannabis may have negative effects on some people's mental health and it may increase their anxiety and paranoia. And so it may not be suitable for everyone with these conditions. Cannabis blends are sometimes high indica or high sativa. And for that reason, it's a very individual response. Also dosage form matters and the timing of your dose matters. Just a quick thought, I'm glad we have cannabis because it's really useful for reducing nausea and vomiting experienced by cancer patients who are undergoing chemotherapy. So this is one of its critical uses. Number four, neurological disorders. Medical cannabis has been investigated for its potential benefits for helping people with neurological disorders, things like multiple sclerosis, neuropathy, and epilepsy. Of those, I would say seizure management is one critical area of research that focuses on cannabis benefits. And if you have uncontrolled seizures or any kind of epileptic condition, please speak to your doctor about using cannabis adjunctively. Number five, sleep aid. Cannabis can have the potential as a sleep aid for some people with insomnia, especially if you're using the sort that is high indica. I would say the downside of this is overuse, and sometimes there is daytime sleepiness and impaired driving associated with nighttime use. So gauge your dose carefully. As I mentioned earlier, the individual response comes into play as some people process cannabis very slowly and also sometimes make the mistake of using it as a sleep aid, but using the high sativa blend. I don't recommend that. Go for high indica. 
there's this thing called cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, which is a long way to say that you could have this rare reaction where you throw up, and I mean projectile vomiting really bad for a long time. It is very unusual, but it does happen. I feel the need to bring this up because we've been seeing more and more emerging reports of this, especially in children. You can't just walk into any doctor, so if you're considering medical cannabis use, you should speak with a doctor that is registered with your state, that uses cannabis frequently, and knows how to prescribe it. At this point, I should caution you that adverse events do occur sometimes, especially with excessive use or misuse. Also, if you have an allergy to it, and while rare, sometimes uh, marijuana can be contaminated, so never buy it off the street. Always get it with a valid prescription from a dispensary. Because state laws differ, you should always follow recommended dosing guidelines, prescriptions, and regulations in your state. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Susie Cohen. I'm a real life pharmacist, so I know a lot about medications and metabolic pathways. I've been writing medical articles for 30 years. You may have seen me in your local newspaper.